So here's why I'll die before I buy a BMW. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. So who would say such a ludicrous comment? Maybe like that. Yes, that's right. There are people out there that say these are the worst cars on the world. But in actuality, there's a whole lot of great cars out there. And a lot of them are actually very reliable. You just have to take care of them. But today, let's talk about some of the things you need to know about BMW that are both positive and negative so you can make a smart decision on your next new car choice. So recently, Scotty took a run at a car like this. It's a BMW 335. I also owned one of these cars. Yes, they have the N54 twin turbo straight six engine, makes about 300 horsepower. And he beat up the fact that these cars need a little bit of maintenance. He started throwing tools around, ripping parts out, and made these cars look like an utter disaster. But the reality is a lot of these cars aren't nearly as bad as he made them sound. Okay, sure these cars are known, they've got some coolant issues, you can get water pumps and thermostat leaks, you can get high pressure fuel pumps, injector issues, wastegate rattle and the like. So Scotty was getting mad at this 335i. There's a few other models, for example, 750li, beautiful car. This has the N63 engine. These engines are known for oil consumption, timing chain issues and power draws on the batteries. But that isn't uncommon and unique for BMW. As well as another one, the E90 that we have parked right here. These have a lot of problems with coolant leaks and oil leaks, but you just have to take care of these cars. So as you can see, they're not perfect. And I'll be the first to admit that. BMWs do have some selective little issues that go along with, with ownership. A lot of it has to do with the owner themselves and the lack of maintenance. So for sure there are problems. Let's walk through a few of those right now. For example, generally speaking, a lot of BMWs, you wanna make sure that they're not leaking. But it's hard to tell if they're leaking or not because when you look underneath, you'll see, oh, there's no stain on the ground. But the unfortunate part is they use, these cars generally use a belly pan. In other words, they're there for wind deflection and essentially to help the car handle and reduce noise. But in doing so, they capture any kind of coolant or oil leaks that typically drip off the engine and you would never know it. You yourself as a consumer look underneath the car, it looks fine. That's not the best giveaway. The best giveaway is to actually open the hood, possibly do a quick look around. Look for the areas around the water pump because that's a common area, thermostat. The radnecks, those are problem areas for coolant. Talk about Vanos issues as well as oil leaks around the valve covers on gas engines. So there's a lot of areas you can be watching for oil or coolant leaks. They're not uncommon and antifreeze generally is an issue in a lot of BMWs. Now some models are a lot worse than others, but be sure to look for that. So if you are interested in a particular car, be sure to have it inspected thoroughly. You can do those basic checks yourself as well. Take it for a test drive. You'll know pretty quickly whether the car is quiet, makes any obscure noises and make sure you try all of the electronics because it's not uncommon to have a lot of electronic issues in these cars and they become very expensive to fix. For example, cooling fans. We did one in this car, for example, and it just all of a sudden gave up. It stopped pushing air and that can be an expensive fix to the tune of five, six, seven hundred dollars if you get the dealer to do it. So make sure every one of your electronic features is tested. Check the sunroof, that's another expensive one. Check all the power windows, those can also be expensive. So check all of the electronics and you can do that just by simply activating all of the buttons within the, within the vehicle. Another thing you wanna be careful for is general wear and tear. It's one thing that there's no leaks and the drive, car drives well. Another thing is, to, unfortunately, if you're buying a used BMW, is to get stuck with a car that needs tires or brakes. I mean, it doesn't, it's not uncommon to have to spend $2,500 if the dealer is going to do it for a set of brakes all the way around. As well, it's not uncommon to spend $2,000, $2,500, maybe even more, three or 4000 if you're driving an M car. So make sure that when you buy that used vehicle that the brakes and tires are in good shape too because those are quick add-ons if you're not careful. They're also a great point of negotiation if the previous owner has a set of tires that for example on the rear is on an M4 and there's only maybe 40% left, negotiate a new set of skins for it because that's going to save you a pile of money. The other thing you want to make sure you do is pull a Carfax or car proof that's going to share a lot of potential issues in the past that these vehicles might have experienced. Has it been a collision? Where has it been registered? Maybe in another country? You probably don't want that. It would be considered a gray market car. A lot of those things will be exposed. Registration and, and, and how many owners' hands has the car been through? Because ultimately, the less owners, the better, generally. Then it's a bit better track record. You wanna make sure there's also history records. 
but outstanding maintenance items you want to make sure that they're taken care of. And that can be done by activating the stock on the side of the steering wheel right here. And by doing that, you press the button, toggle through, and you'll quickly find out if there's any outstanding issues, whether that's brake needs to be, whether it's brake flush needs to be done, whether you need engine oil, or whether you need some other service issue that possibly would pop up. It'll also tell you whether there's any fault codes. As well, be sure that there's no outstanding engine lights. If there are, it doesn't hurt. Actually, as a matter of fact, I've experienced this myself where when I was selling a car, I had an individual show up with his own personal code reader. This is a great way to do that. All you have to do is, if you see an engine light, plug in with your code reader to be able to do a quick scan. It's a great peace of mind. It'll tell you the difference between a major engine issue or something relatively minor. Again, a great means to negotiate a lower wage, and that's a great way to get a better buy as well. Now, what's another negative side of buying a BMW? Well, it depends whether you're buying a new or used. If you're buying a used, likely you won't have warranty. So again, all those things that I mentioned, you're going to want to take care of. Make sure the maintenance is up to date, make sure it's all clean, tidy, and there's no issues. If you're buying a new vehicle, you need to understand that what's the best approach is a lease versus finance or cash deal. Now, if you're buying the car brand new, you have to understand and you're financing it you will literally be underwater or you'll be upside down on your loan payments at around the two year, two to three year mark. Why is that? Because you'll still owe X amount of dollars that will exceed the actual value of the car because of the steep depreciation that BMWs often experience. If you're buying a Lexus or some of these other vehicles I mentioned in previous videos, for example, even a Jeep, if you can believe it, will hold a better value. So you'll likely never be upside down on your loan payments. But on a BMW, and especially on a 5 or a 7 series or an 8 series or any of those, you will be upside down on your loan payments. In other words, at some point in that 2 to 3 year range, you'll find yourself owing more than the vehicle is actually worth on the current retail market. So consider those factors. Now, a purchase outright is actually okay if you're going to own the vehicle for a long, long time. But you may actually consider a lease if you're one of those people that just considers holding on to a vehicle for maybe two or three years. Because at that point, it doesn't really matter. You're only going to hold on for two years. You know you're going to incur a loss, but that's an accepted loss. And you can move on and you'll always have a car with warranty. So all those issues about repairs will never be a concern. Now, of course, warranties only cover unexpected typical drivetrain issues. Warranties aren't always the end all be all either. Don't let that fool you because if you burn through a set of brakes, tires, a clutch, if you have a manual gearbox, those things are not covered under warranty. Those are considered regular maintenance and wear items. And so just because you wear the wheels off your car doesn't mean the dealer is going to cover it. In most cases, they will not unless it's a factory defect. For example, something splitting aside on the sidewall or something unusual like that. Most of the time, wear items mean it's your cost and you're going to incur it. So just be sure to incorporate some of those maintenance costs when you buy a car. And consider buying a car that's in the two to three year range. We've already also talked about depreciation. That is the sweet spot where you get maximum service life versus the best buy and the best value. Because buying new, obviously, you lose a significant amount of money, anywhere from three to $5,000, literally by crossing that threshold off of the dealer's lot. And so what are the things that Scotty got all excited about? Well, he kept going on and on and on and on and on about all the plastic parts in BMWs. Do you think BMW is the only manufacturer to use plastic parts in their vehicles? Absolutely not. Look under the hood of almost any modern vehicle and you'll find plastic coolant hoses and plastic radiator ends plastic in a lot of places. Another thing that gets scrutiny is plastic water pump impellers. Sure, BMW uses that, but a lot of brands use plastic water pumps or at least, at the very least, plastic impellers within the water pump. It doesn't matter what you're driving, whether you're driving a Dodge or a Chevy or a BMW, they often have plastic impellers because it's more cost effective and actually in some ways, some small way, plastic is superior. Why? Because metals actually sometimes corrode in other ways due to other contamination as well as some of the electric water pumps are beneficial in other ways. On one hand, it's electric, so it seems like it's a bad situation that can potentially go wrong. But on the other hand, it allows easier servicing in some cases. And electric water pumps means less drag on the crankshaft because conventional water pumps are driven off the crank. And when that happens, that means more drag on the system, more reduction in power, poor fuel economy. 
So BMW is looking at some things like that that are innovative, that are trying to improve efficiency, improve performance. And so there's always two sides to that coin. So while Scotty got excited about that, it's not always the worst thing in the world. Another quick thing is if you're buying a new or used BMW, I just wanna share with you, you will understand that the more premium the model, the harder the depreciation they face. So if you wanna keep more of your money in your pocket, typically buy a more base model, get a two series with a stick shift and a six cylinder engine. That's one of the more optimal vehicles. Some of the M cars hold their value while other ones not as much. If you buy a five series, 530 or a 550 or a 750, those models are typically gonna take a real beating and they're the vehicles that you wanna try to avoid unless you really feel the need to own those vehicles. I will as well say, if you're looking for specific models, consider certain engines. The two liter four cylinder engines, the current modular designs, as example in the B48, Great engine, so far they seem to be pretty reliable, as is the B58, which is the turbo six cylinder engine. Also a modular design, also built on a diesel block. So it's actually very robust. There's lots of great technology in both of those engines. And they're expected to last a lot longer. Fine in the turbo six and the N55, and definitely the N54, which Scotty talked about as being an absolute disaster. And he showed the worst case scenario in BMW's world. So that's not really the good example to use because there are a lot of great engines. As well, if you want the most powerful engines, you look for the twin turbo V8s. But if you don't want reliability issues, those are the exact engines you want to avoid. And typically stay with the inline six cylinder engines if you're more worried about reliability, blended with performance. If you're strictly looking for the base model, save your money the best you can. The four cylinders are an option. But again, understand the four cylinders weren't necessarily a great engine overall in the BMW lineup. The inline six cylinder engines are always been the BMW trademark engines and those are the ones you typically wanna buy. Whether you're buying an E92 with a straight six or you're buying an E30 325 car with a straight six, they're all great engines and they all have a great history to them. So those are the engines you want if you wanna consider yourself a true enthusiast and you wanna have an engine that has the best chance of survival. So it's not all bad. In fact, you just need to understand where some of the goods and the bads are, how to look for some of the problem areas, how to understand how to spend your money and how not to spend your money, get through all that smoke and mirrors and understand that you'll have literally one of the best driving cars on the planet. They call them ultimate driving machine for a reason because they are in fact one of the best driving cars on the world. Sure, you can buy a 911, maybe marginally better or supercars, but try to find a better driver's car. I've been in some other premium models and I'm not going to talk about that today, but I've been other premium German vehicles that don't feel as substantial as a BMW. Sometimes the doors rattle a little bit more. BMWs, the doors close tightly. They feel nice, they feel snug. The vehicles are always tight. And I also found that BMWs hold up better to, against rust than almost any other German manufacturer on the planet today. Try an Audi. Try a Benz, they rust, but BMWs rarely rust. And if they do, it's after many, many years. You rarely find a BMW with five or 10 years under its belt that have rust on them. They actually hold up very, very well. So there's lots to love about the brand. It's overall a phenomenal make, and I can't help but tell you enough that these are the reasons you probably wanna own this car. And to say that I would die before owning a BMW is so far from the truth that it's not even funny, everybody. So that's the bottom line. And with all of that said, of course, we know that there are some reliable BMWs, but you wanna know specifically which are the most reliable BMW engines. Definitely gonna to wanna to check out that, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. Catch you real soon, bye-bye.